Welcome to Live in the Solution. I'm Mary Trimble and I'm here with David Cochran. <laughs> I managed to grab him out of the uh, lobby last night and made him, made him <laughs> come in here. Now, David is really interesting. He has a YouTube channel. What's it called? David Cochran's Astrology. There you go. You can't go wrong. <laughs> David Cochran's Astrology. I will put all the links below in the show more section. And he actually teaches astrology for free on YouTube. And he teaches, tell me, he teaches vibrational astrology, right? So that, I want to know a bit about that. But before I ask okay. him that, sorry, <laughs> I also wanted to mention that he developed the software, an astrology software called Kepler and what's... And Sirius. Sirius, yeah. yeah. So he's yeah. very, very smart. <laughs> very clever. Not like me. <laughs> So he's the expert. <laughs> I'm just the sidekick. <laughs> so David, tell us yeah. about your uh, vibrational astrology. Okay, well, vibrational astrology. It's, you know, we have all these different kinds of astrology. Hellenistic, yeah. medieval, Vedic, modern psychological, evolutionary. And there's vibrational. So vibrational is exactly what it says. based on the idea of vibrations, waves, frequencies. So it's a very modern, you could say ultra-modern mm. form of astrology. It's very evidence-based. means we do research, we look at numbers, yes. we look at the data, and we see what really works. Mm. So this is really exciting because astrology actually works. It's no, not, it does, yeah, yes. Yeah, and you know it does, I yeah. know it does because we experience it. Now we're demonstrating that it works, and not only demonstrating... Scientifically. Yeah, you can because say because so. there's evidence of it. It's yeah. evidence, and also when we do the research, we find out exactly how it works. So every time we do the research, it's not just to confirm, like, oh, I know everything. I'm just going to show it. No, we go in there and we say, you know what, Aries acts a little differently from what we thought. Mm. Taurus acts a little bit differently. There's more aspects than we thought. Just the square trine sextile. So these aspects we thought were minor. People have maybe heard of things like quintiles and yeah. so on. They're not minor. No, no. They're, they're big. So we're seeing them show up. We can see what's in the charts of the greatest athletes, mm. rock musicians. So that's fun. Yeah. So we go through the database and we find out what they have in common. Oh, that's And then we collect new data. We can see that it's true. So the, the other thing about it, because it sounds so scientific, and scientific to people sounds dry, but it's not because mm. you can feel the person. You well, that's what I was going to ask language. you next. Yeah, okay. Because I was going to say, yeah. vibrational, what, I watched those classes actually, okay. and I was oh. like, maybe I'm in the wrong, <laughs> <laughs> maybe I'm studying the wrong kind. But you can't, I think the more you learn, the more you know that you need to learn, and then, and it's nice to branch out. So vibrational got me because I'm all into good vibes. <laughs> <laughs> and so I wanted to ask you, David, do you, do you think, there's room for intuition in astrology, so you feel you 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 know you yeah. you're in somebody's presence and you feel their vibe and you can absolutely yeah. you know this idea that we have like right brain left yeah. brain you know this type that type maybe you know there are maybe some extreme people who are off on one end or the other but most of us we're using both all the time yeah. every time you get in your car you decide which way to go you feel you sense you intuit you meet yes. somebody. Most of what we see in a person is not what they said. It, you pick up the vibes. Vibe, yes. You know, I mean, even animals couldn't survive if they didn't pick up the vibes of what other animals are doing. So we're responding to vibration, to tone, texture, quality. Because all the we time. are vibrations ourselves. That's aren't right. We? That's, That's right. It. Yeah. So there's no big distinction between intuition, sensitivity, and seeing that it's actually true when you look at it more objectively. So. They enhance each other. Yeah. I see all this as synergistic. I yeah. see it as a new wave. And also, let me say this, our view of what science is has changed. Yes. You know, back, say, 50 years ago, they taught us that science, like the universe is billiard balls. It's all, right. you know, cause and effect. We measure it. Now, well, that's part of the deal. But now we have, you know, quantum reality and, right. you know, it's it's a magical world we live in. So science is taking us into a magical world. So really, I think then where we're headed, where the next generation is headed, where the millennials are and where the millennials' mm -hmm. children will be is an integrated world. Yes. You know, where we're sensitive, we're intuitive, and 
hey, let's look at things clearly. You know, yes. we don't have to be spaced out about it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So I really think vibrational astrology is the way of the future. Right. Because it works. It's it's so helpful for for intuitive understanding as well. Right. Because it corroborates. It's going to confirm it what you It spoke to me. It spoke to me yeah. when I was listening. So well, I took um, David's lecture. I took his classes. I always say classes. There were <laughs> lectures. And you were really funny, actually. You had a dry <laughs> sense of humor. I was laughing. I'm English. I get it. You know? <laughs> I was like, oh, I really like this guy. So I went to another one. You know? <laughs> he was really entertaining, but really cerebral and smart. Yeah. So I felt really clever when I went. <laughs> So I want to ask you this question because um, my friend who's an astrologer, he wanted me to ask, he wanted me to ask, you know, um, celebrity astrologers. <laughs> okay. Um, what, was there a moment, do you remember a moment when you're like, oh, wow, I've got this as an astrologer? That I saw that astrology worked and was real? No, me, when or? you kind of got it and it kind of, and I was, you're like, I got this, I really get this, I really understand it. Well, it comes in stages for That's me. That's what everyone says. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Does this sound like a broken record here? I, I like that, this? though, because well, I think if you say I've got it, then you're uh, like, oh. It comes in stages. <laughs> I guess it's the way it works. So it happened for me in September 1972 was when I really dove headfirst all the way into astrology. I had time. I didn't have money, but I had time. <laughs> <laughs> like most astrologers. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it was a prelude to my astrology yeah. <laughs> career because I hadn't started yet. But I, was, I had just gotten out of college. I called it people in that, you know, hadn't started a big career or anything. So, and I had all the student debt. Anyway, it was not uncommon for somebody at that stage of life. And I had time. It was the summer before I was going to go to graduate school. And I was just got so excited about astrology. And within, I would think it was about two weeks, I had my oh my God moment, you know, like, it works. Yeah. There's, un, there's no, this, this is there's, working. Yeah. You know, not everything I looked at. I mean, I would, some things, well, this is, but I started interviewing people. Oh. And it became an obsession. I was interviewing, I would interview a person for about two hours. And I interviewed two or three people a day and I spent hours analyzing the chart ahead of time. So I spent all day interviewing because I had to find out what is going on. And I was going to go for a PhD in psychology. And I thought, what am I doing that for if this works so well? Yeah. And if nobody's using this, at least in the academic world. So, yeah, within a few weeks, I, I decided something here is working. Mm. And that was it. I mean, I, I couldn't stop. You know, what well, is, then you just answered my second question. All right. <laughs> <laughs> what inspired you to get into it? So uh, that's obviously the answer there. Well, there were some preludes to it. You know, why did I get into? Why yeah. did I open the books in True. in seventy two? So uh, that a few things happened. One is I got into psychology when I was very young. I was actually in like middle school, and I got interested in psychology. People don't read psychology when they're like twelve and thirteen, but I did. And, you know, I started, <laughs> I'm a nerd, yeah, so, and I started reading Freud and Jung and stuff like this, and then when I was about 20 years old, uh, I read the part from, from Jung where he did research on astrology. Yes. And I thought to myself, this guy's a genius, and he's actually using astrology? astrology. It's not just like a projection of your yeah. psyche, this guy. He's actually getting useful information. Whoa, now I've got to check it out. So when I got that time free after I graduated, it was on my mind. I've got mm -hmm. to check this out to see what the heck Jung is talking about. Because I assumed that it was just a mythology. You know, it was just stories about the soul. It would be very good for developing wisdom, but you're not actually going to learn about somebody. You know? Right. <laughs> but then I researched it and... And also, at that was the time I got into yoga and meditation, and uh, you know, the people in India were saying that astrology works, and Jung was saying it works. So I had to find out. Yeah, I just had to find out. Because yeah. you're the researcher. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so you know, a lot of things came together for me in astrology because I was, I was intending to go to, into psychology, but I was also into math and things like that, and and also sociology. I, 
kind of like an eclectic, you know, a little bit of a polymath. And if I went into one area, it's like I couldn't use the rest of me. Right. You know, so I liked research and psychology, but it always seemed too narrow, too, too divorced from the other parts. And I just couldn't find the right mix. And I wasn't sure astrology was the answer. Because now I had all the analysis of what's going on, where the planets are, and I learned the astronomy and spherical trigonometry and all that technical stuff. And then I was getting deep into the mythology and sensitivity. So it was perfect. It's like yeah. everything. And, and spiritual. Yes, well. spiritual, mm -hmm. right? Because I, I'd become vegetarian and all that stuff. So it brought it all together. And plus the feeling of doing something worthwhile. Yeah. You know, because if astrology works, and I was sure that it does, then this could be a next step for, for humanity. You know, at least for yeah. the academic, the business world. That there's a tool out there that we're not using. Right. And if it could... I, and I still believe to this day that astrology will move us forward in the same way that we now have cell phones and internet. Yeah. We've moved our physical world and our communication world to some level that people would only think was a fantasy, yeah. like science fiction. But we still have people suffering from depression and OCD and marital problems and all these basic kinds of things. And it doesn't feel to me like we've made a lot of progress with that. And we have all these drug therapies and alternative therapies. And I, I really feel in my heart that astrology is part of bringing answers to our human lives. Yeah, I do too. You know? Yeah. So what's not to like about this? I know. You know? <laughs> I know. And I think, I, I don't know what you think about this, but I see so many more younger millennials coming in, yes. right? Yes. There are a lot at this conference, yes. that more than I've seen... Before, so it's yeah. kind of exciting, and it does mean that it's becoming more um, acceptable in society at large. So I yes. think people are more open to it, and we're moving towards that, I think. Yes, yeah, and I see many things that are pushing that forward. One is the Internet, because now yes. information is freely distributed. It's right. the reason why I love making the YouTube videos, as you do, yeah. is get this information out to people. So you, we're not sort of restricted to the formal way of what the teachers are presenting right. to us and what the school system. People have access to information outside of the standard thing. That's one thing that's moving forward. The other thing is the information age. Because we have databases of tens of thousands of charts with accuracy. We can check things out. We can look at things. So we have ways to move astrology forward that we didn't have before. Right. So... Well, that's really, I'm so glad that you came in. Yeah, let me, let me push one thing. <laughs> yes, please, 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 okay. go ahead. <laughs> I do a lot of things with the software, and I've written books and YouTube videos, but I really want to mention our Vibrational Astrology Conference. Okay. Oh. Yes, yeah, so we have an, a, a conference in Gainesville, Florida, so it's oh. North Florida. Um, every year, we just had our first one. Oh, really? Yeah, just like two months ago, and the next one is going to be March 27 to 29, 2020. Oh. Uh, the first one, we had 100 people come. We're expecting over 150, possibly close to 200 next year. Because the excitement about vibrational astrology is going through the roof. Yes. Right? And people said, we need a conference as well as Oh, that's brilliant. I didn't know that. So yes, good. yes, yes. So you hear that? A nice yeah. holiday in Florida. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Warm weather. March is good because it's not too hot. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's yeah. Right. Um, so what I'll do is I'll put all the links to David's uh, his channel and the um, Gainesville um, Astrology Conference for next yeah. year for the vibrational... Uh, if you want to raise your vibration... <laughs> attend the conference in Gainesville, yeah. Florida, 2020 in March, right? March, March, March 27 to 29th. Yep. Yeah, great. So thank you so much, David, for taking mm. this time and coming in and talking to me. Thank it's so you. sweet. <laughs> How kind. <laughs> yes, there you go. Listen, guys, if you have any questions, please post them down below. Don't forget to like this video, share it on your social media and comment. And if you haven't already, please subscribe and subscribe to David's channel also. I love you all. Thank you. <laughs> and I'll see you next week or sooner.